Today, we'll be learning how to make our own peony centers. Learning how to DIY peony centers gives you a great advantage. I prefer to make flower centers myself as they allow me to create a unique looking one. It is also a great skill to know and a lifesaver in the event that you run out of the store-bought ones. The center creates a support for the flower petals to be built on. Hence, it is really important to get this step right. It is the foundational structure of the flower. Once you are ready, let's get started. Before we start, let's go through the tools that we need. So firstly, we will need our color palette here because we're going to color our stamens. Um, then we need a 26 gauge wire. This is a white wire, but you can use any colors uh, you like. We need some floral tape, some stamens. These are store-bought ones, but I, I will show you how we can handmade and DIY some of our own uh, stamens later on. We need a uh, plier, wire plier and a pair of craft scissors, some brushes for us to do painting, a paper towel for us to swatch some of our colours. Uh, we will then need some gel colours, I will go through them uh, later on. Some shortening, some um, egg whites and also wafer paper glue. So these two act as the glue for our mediums and because we are doing two different kinds of stamens, we will need two different kinds of glue. Uh, if you are just sticking to one medium, you can just use either one of them. Uh, some cornstarch in case uh, our wafer paper gets too uh, moist. It will be a great way for us to dry them. And some vodka for us to dilute our gel colours. Right, okay. So before we start, let me just bring this away. So with the 26 gauge wire that we have, what we're going to do is we're going to get the plier and we're going to trim them into uh, threes. So these are the two different kinds of stamens that we'll be working with. So one will be the one with the store-bought stamen, but we're going to paint, do a little bit of painting action so you can see the difference. Okay, And then the other one will be a, a DIY one from um, just using some gelatin and wafer paper uh, strips. Okay. So I'm going to start with the store-bought stamen first. Okay, so there are two parts to making our uh, center, peony center. First will be these little buds that we are going to create. And then secondly, um, it will be these stamens that we're going to attach. So we're going to work with part uh, one first. So with these guys that we just cut, uh, we're going to grab a plier. And to each of them, we're going to create a little hook. So maybe just place our finger at maybe somewhere around just create three quarters of an inch and we're going to just do a little tiny hook. So it should look like that. Okay, so to the remaining two, we're going to do the same thing. You can go ahead and just grab both of them and do the same thing. So right now, we're going to make use of um, our gum paste. And we're going to use it to create our centers over here. So to create this um, colored gum paste, what I used was I used a little bit of the Emery Color Avocado um, Chocolate Brown and a little bit of Ivory to get this muted green. So when you're working on gum paste, you will always need a little bit of shortening just to make it softer and pliable to work with. And just always give it a good knead. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to create these uh, three little guys separately before we attach them together. Okay, so we're just going to pull out Just a tiny bit, maybe just three pieces. We're going to eyeball this. And I'll keep the rest. So when you're not working um, 
on your gum paste, it's good to just keep them inside a bag so they do not dry out on you. So I'm just going to zip it up and start working with one first. So knead it. And what we're going to do here is place the gum paste between our palms and just give it a good roll and try to exert some pressure to it. So when you first knead them and try to roll them up, you get all these little cracks going on on the surface. And uh, that is not what we want. So what we're going to do is just going to press it down in between our palms and roll them, exerting some pressure. And when you release, you should get something like that. So hairline cracks are fine, but maybe not the drastic ones. And then what we're going to do here is, if your gum paste is getting a little bit too sticky, you can always get a bit of cornstarch. Just pat it, pat it on. And then I'm going to just use my index finger to roll on just one end of it. So we're just trying to create all these little teardrop shapes. So something like that. Okay, this is a little bit too much, so I'm probably just gonna pull out and continue rolling. So it's, al it's always okay to start with more and you can always just pull them away when you do not need so much of them. So what I'm looking at here now is like a really, really thick bottom. And then as it goes up, it just slims down and tapers off into a very, uh, very slim tip, I would say, right here. And right now what I have to do is just right at the top of this um, little bud over here. <coughs> so right at the tip, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use my fingers and give it a tiny pinch. So to create a little top like that. And then right now what I'm going to do is I am going to insert the wire with the little uh, hook that we created into this gum paste. So if you're using gum paste, the glue that we'll be using will be just egg whites. So just want to tap it into the egg whites. And then just push it in from the bottom. And as long as the hook goes into the gum paste, uh, you're good to go. So you don't have to push all the way through. And you will see this tiny opening at the bottom of your little gum paste. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of cornstarch first. Because as I pinch, the egg whites might ooze out. So just a little bit of cornstarch will help um, prevent your fingers get, from getting too sticky. So what I'm going to do here is just pinch to cover up that little hole. If you need help, you can always just get a skewer to then close it up. So yeah, there you go. So it's really important to get a very nice closure at the bottom part. Okay. So the last thing that we're going to do to this guy will be, so now it's looking a little bit straight and it looks a little bit uh, stiff. So I always like to just go ahead and bend it a little bit so that it gives it a very nice movement. So something that speaks um, mm, more of nature rather than just having a stiff top. Yep, so there you go. So there will be my first guy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the other two uh, in the exact same way. Uh, and I'll meet you right here when I'm back. So now that we are done with our three little buds, uh, I just want to take a quick note to show you guys that these three um, buds do not have to be the same size. So some of them can vary, some of them can go uh, smaller and some of them can go bigger. If you prefer your peony to have um, five of these, you can go ahead and do so too. So like if you really take a close look and dissect a peony, you'll be able to see this very beautiful detail inside the center of the peony. So I was just going to go with three uh, today. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring these three together. 
and they're going to all meet in the middle right here. So one thing I just want to emphasize is the very, um, I would say like the fatter bottom of these little buds. We're trying to go ahead and um, preserve that. So as we push all three together, the last thing we want to do is to push everything together and make them super straight. So we still want to have that little bell bottom um, showing. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So as we are pushing them together, try to just gently press them onto each other rather than pushing it, uh, pushing them all together. So I'm just going to slowly mold them into each other. And this is where I am at. So just looking from the top, it looks like that. And then from the bottom, all the wires are separated at this point. And we're going to pull them all together so it becomes one um, piece of wire. Okay, so right now I'm just going to hold them with one hand. And then at the bottom part, I'm just trying to squeeze all the wires so that they meet at one point. So do not worry if the bottom part is kind of ripped. We can always uh, bring it back later on. So just going to go ahead and do some squeezing action. So now the wires has pretty much come together already. I'm going to hold it there, bring it back to the top, and just adjusting the shape of my um, little center here. So right now, what we're going to do is, in order for these three gun paste to stick together, we'll have to dip our brush into the egg whites and just put just a tiny bit of egg whites in between them so that they stick really well to each other. Just gently press it in. Okay. And once we are done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over and hold it like that. And then with this hand, I'm going to do a little bit of pinching action to make sure that all the gum paste actually come together. So this is how it should look like at the bottom. Okay, so now once we are here, we will need our floral tape. So for those who um, hasn't used a floral tape before, you need to kind of stretch it to activate the stickiness of the uh, floral tape. What you want to do is you just want to wrap the floral tape around the stem and just give it a good pinch as you roll them down or as you trail down the stem. So you want to move the floral tape at a 45 degree angle and not like a horizontal angle because that way you'll just end up wrapping the entire thing without bringing it down the stem. So we just want to roll it, pinch it, roll and pinch. You want to go all the way. Okay. So it's okay to just leave a tiny bit here because we are always bringing this guy in and out of the styrofoam. So it would be nice to have a sharper uh, end at this point. So right here, if you start to see at the top, it might look a little bit too straight to you. Before the gum paste has dried out, you can always twist it around just to create the shape that you want it to be. So what I'm trying to achieve uh, right here is, or just remember that we always want a fatter bottom and then I would say a skinnier top. So it still um, resembles a teardrop shape, but now they are all separated. Okay. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to start painting these little tips over here. I'm going to use um, Claret from Sugar Flare. And to dilute it, I'm just going to use a little bit of vodka. We're just trying to make this gel color into a paintable consistency. We, so we probably do not need so much um, of the vodka. So I'm just going to bring some over. As what we're looking for is something like a very rich paintable consistency. So not something that is very diluted. So you really want a rich tone from this claret. 
So this is what we are looking for. And then here. So to the parts that we have pinched, uh, usually it is an extra thing that you add on. So this is just like a little shortcut if you do not want to add on another piece of gum paste which can be really fragile. You can do this pinching action and then what we're going to do next is we're just going to paint it over. So it saves you a lot of time and probably um, some anxiety from it breaking. <laughs> so just some bits of pink paint. So if you want it to go lighter, you can always dilute it further. And go ahead and paint it. So that is how it should look like. Okay, so I'm going to do the same to the next guy that I have. So just painting the tip. So it doesn't matter if you are working on the uh, storeboard stamen or the wafer paper uh, one, the center is always the same. So we just want to work on the center and now we can proceed to making the first method which is the storeboard stamen ones before we work on this guy over here. So when you buy the stamens from stores, they actually come in uh, wrap up shapes like that. And what I did was I just released them. So they are individual pieces like that. And what we're going to do now is we'll need some strips of wafer paper. Um, and we're going to trim them into probably just somewhat like this size. So we'll need about um, four of these guys. Okay, set it aside. So I go a tiny skinnier. So I'm just eyeballing so you don't have to follow exactly. So pretty much just as long as they are of this uh, thickness. And then what we're gonna do now is usually when stamens come um, you know in a bunch, they're all round up like that. So when it's round up like that, um, most people do stamens um, straight, you know, just putting them on a wire and then after that, attaching them onto the little bud that we've created. So um, the only thing with that is that you probably need a lot of them to kind of like cover up the entire, um, I would say, circumference of what we have over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to spread out our stamens into pretty much like a flatter uh, shape this way so that it will just go around the entire butt nicely and it's gonna surround the entire thing. So to do that, we are going to firstly trim these guys into half. So you want to hold them on both sides and trim it. So we're gonna end up with four sets of halves. Two. Three. And four. Okay. So in order to secure these guys, this is what our wafer paper straights will be doing for us. So we'll be using the wafer paper glue. And you can go ahead and adjust the heights of the stamens if you want to make it look more natural. We're going to stick these guys onto this little strip over here. So I am going to just paint on one side, one half of it. Not too much, just enough for our stamens to stick on. I'm going to hold it up, spread it out, and then attach them on this wafer paper strip. 
So take your time with this because these are very delicate tiny pieces of stamens. So if you do not have enough glue, you can always add on. It gets a little messy, but uh, it's really, really worth it. Okay, so just maybe two more pieces right here. Okay, so once you're done with that, we're just gonna glue the other side. And what we're gonna do is we're going, we are going to just cover it up and secure them this way. Okay, and for this side, you can go ahead and shrimp it away. So you can see that right now, the wafer paper still has the glue on it. So it is really soft. You can go ahead and bend it into almost like a C shape. So this is to allow us to wrap it around the little center that we just did. So we're going to make four sets of this right here. And we're going to come back um, uh, when I'm done because they're going to be the same. So I'm just going to repeat the steps. So when you guys are applying the wafer paper glue, make sure to not apply too much. Just as long as the surface starts to um, glisten, you're good. Because if you apply too much, the wafer paper will start to break off and you will not be able to hold up your um, stamens well like that. The last set goes in. You can take your time to do all the adjustments you need to do here. Because once it is fixed onto into the strips. You cannot change it around anymore. Just the last part over here, and then I'm just gonna wrap it up. Okay, so now that we are done with all four sets, we are ready to attach them. So I'm just gonna bring out the guy that I just did. And if you're working with um, this particular method, right, it will be great for you to work on it when your gum paste is still somewhat soft. So it can actually hold on to these little wafer paper strips a lot better. So to attach them, I'm just going to dip into my wafer paper glue. And let's start with the first guy that we had. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of glue right here. So remember, do not add too much because they might just break off. You can go ahead and wrap it up. And just hold it there for you know a few seconds. So when I'm working on this, I would always like my stamens to go a little bit taller than the first center that we made. So it is a little bit weird if you go a little bit too low. And hence, it's really important to stick your stamen so that the bottom part is really short and then the top part is really long. So this allows your stamens to go higher than the um, center that we did. Okay, so after we're done with that, we're going to move on. So just a tiny bit the glue. Wait there. And I'm gonna move on. the 
last set. So you can also apply a wafer paper glue here. You don't always have to apply it there. And then the last one. Right, there you go. So just hold it there for a few seconds to make sure they are um, stuck on well. So right now, if you take a look at um, the stamens, they look really flat and um, a little bit stiff. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're also going to trim the bottom part later, but we'll leave that for later. So in order to kind of fluff it up, what I'm going to do is I always hold my fingers at where the uh, strips are because now they're really soft, so you do not want them to move around too much. So I always hold it there and then I'm just going to use my fingers to ruffle into the... Um, stamens and just bend it back and forth just to create that messy look. So once you fluff it up, it looks a lot more natural too. So there you go. And then we're going to trim the bottom part. So you just go ahead and use the scissors. Just to clean it up, so we can proceed to the next step a lot easier. Okay, so there you go. So this is how it should look like when you're done with all these steps. And we're going to move on to our last step, or rather the second last step, which is to paint these little stamens. If you prefer to keep them as uh, yellow, you can just go ahead and keep them. This step is optional. Uh, I personally prefer something that is a little bit uh, uh, not so normal, so I prefer a, like a golden uh, tip. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in some golden dust and paint. Okay. So for the gold dust, I'm using the um, Super Gold from Rokum. I'm just going to go ahead and grab just a tiny bit out. So similarly, we are looking at a very rich uh, paintable consistency, so not something really diluted because we want um, the stamens to really be able to hold on onto this uh, paint. So just a few drops of vodka and just go in and mix it with your brush. So you're looking at something like that. So like a very rich paintable consistency. And then we're going to hold up our stamen. And right now we are going to just kind of randomly brush into it. Um, I do not need all the yellow parts to turn um, golden. So I'm still going to retain some of the yellow stamens, but just, you know, just add on this little extra touch to it. I think it makes a lot of difference. So if you like, you can also bring some of the gold paint down to the uh, stems of the stamens. This part is completely optional. But I will go for it because it makes a lot of difference. Okay. So we're done. So you can, for a quick comparison, you can see how it is like before it's painted and how it looks like after it is painted. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to our last step, which is to clean up the bottom part. So now before we proceed to the next step, I will need this guy to dry at least um, overnight so that the gum paste dry it up well before we proceed with our next step because we're going to do a little bit of a um, so what I'm going to do here is we're going to add in this little um, butt over here so we're going to be doing some pushing actions so if this part is not dried out and we start to push it it might just get pushed off the little hook that we created 
and like all efforts will be wasted. So if you need to do a lot of these uh, at one go, I would suggest everyone to do this part and maybe just make a few and then let them dry overnight before we proceed with the next step. So here we have one that has been drying overnight. So it's really uh, stable. Not, um, any amount of pushing will not push these guys out of the um, hook that we have created. So right now, we're going to create this little um, sealing part at the bottom. So we're just going to seal the entire part so you do not get to see all this wafer paper and all these little um, things sticking out. So right here, just to give you guys another option, uh, if you do not have gum paste at home, uh, you can always go for this another medium that I recently discovered. This is actually called the uh, air dry clay. It is very lightweighted, so it really just bounces off. You can see how it bounces off. So um, another name for it will be paper weight air dry clay. So it is really almost weightless and it feels like just really paper weight. So the reason why I actually also wanted to um, introduce this new media, medium uh, is for, because I've been receiving a lot of feedbacks on the, like how everybody makes their flowers and then it gets too humid with a gum paste center and then it starts to attract ants or it starts to melt. So if you're just making your flowers for decorative purposes, uh, an air dry clay will be a good substitute. So you can also use air dry clay to do all the steps that we've been doing. And then you can also use air dry clay to seal up the bottom right here. So just a quick note, air dry clay is not edible. So if you're using it, um, probably it's good to not put it on a cake or to let your clients know that they should not consume um, this part of the flower. Okay. So if anybody's wondering, air dry clay really just feels like Play-Doh. So they're really soft and pliable. And I've gone ahead to use the same colouring I did for the gum paste to create this colour uh, in the air dry clay. So air dry clay comes in um, a default white colour and we will just go ahead and get this colour from the colourings that we did. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to knead it a little bit so it all comes together. So as the name suggests, it's air dry clay. So once we work on them and secure the position we want them to be, it will dry naturally overnight and you get this very nice, uh, sturdy, um, pliable consistency but it really stays in place so it doesn't move around too much and I personally feel like the wafer paper petals actually stick better to this material as compared to the gum paste. So this is just an option for you guys to consider. So I'm probably just gonna pour a little bit more. And we're not using the air dry clay, you would also similarly like to just wrap them up. If not, they will start to dry out on you. So just in a cling wrap and maybe into a ziplock bag. And I'm gonna just roll it into a ball shape here and now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to I'm just gonna train the bottom part so I'm just gonna bring this air dry clay and thread my stem through it so if you're working with air dry clay in order for this air dry clay to stick to whatever we have on top you can just go ahead and use uh, plain water and just want to pin the top part where it will meet the center of the stamen and then just want to push do this pushing action and make sure that they join as one so this is uh, to allow for us to cover all these strips of paper so you're going to hold it up here and slowly push this clay up and at any point if you feel like you need to just top up some liquid, you can go ahead and do so. Yeah, here we go. So I'm slowly working my way up. So I'm slowly working my way up so it gets to cover all the 
wafer paper beads. So at some point, if you feel like that's, that's the best your fingers can help to push up, you can always just get a pair of, just get a skewer and push it up this way. You can always push from the bottom. If there isn't enough. Okay, so once you're done, you want to make sure that the bottom part is well sealed up as well. You can remove any extra pieces if you need to. Just make sure it's well sealed up. And then you can always go back to readjust all these little stamens that you have. So the aim of adding this last bit over here is to allow us to create this very round circular bottom so it's a lot easier for our peony petals to be attached on. So imagine if you were to end off your uh, peony centre here, you actually first thing, people will get to see all these wafer paper strips which isn't the prettiest. Um, and secondly, it will be really hard for the petals to adhere on because it's almost like a squarish uh, bottom uh, as compared to a rounder one. So for me, based on experience, I always feel like, so I initially started off with this and then uh, later on I discovered this method and I feel like all my petals uh, are stuck on a lot easier and also the entire peony turns out to be a lot uh, prettier and more natural looking. So this is just one thing you want to take note of. So and with that, we are done with our method number one of making our uh, peony centers. So in any case, if you do not have the store-bought stamens, we can always make stamens from our uh, wafer paper strips. So what we're going to do now is, we are, let me just show you guys, so it will end up looking like that. So all these little strips, plus all this little detail on top. Okay. So paper, wafer paper are like white um, when you first buy them. So. Um, I would prefer something of a yellowy tone uh, to our um, stamens. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out uh, my cream colour. And I'm going to put it on my colour palette. So I'm going to dilute with a little bit of vodka and we're going to paint this entire piece. You have a nice cream tone, so I'm just going to check my colour. Uh, maybe just something darker. Okay, so if you're unsure, you can always check it on a piece of wafer paper first. Okay, so this is the pale yellow we are getting. I think I'll go just slightly darker than this and I can start painting on my uh, strip of paper here. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to paint the entire strip of paper to turn them into this pale yellow tone. So this is a natural reaction once um, the liquid goes onto the wafer paper. So in order to prevent that, we are going to take some cornstarch and just dry out the surface gently.
I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to do the same thing to the back. So if you feel like this part is too light, you can always go back to uh, repaint it. And make it darker. Okay, so this is the color we are going for. And what we're going to do now is we're going to fold this piece of wafer paper. So when your wafer paper is moist, when you start to fold them, it might stick onto each other like that. So in order to prevent that, we can take some cornstarch and just dry out the surface uh, in this middle uh, part over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it and just making sure the center part meets and just checking that they are not sticking. So the cornstarch really gives you a very dry surface so it doesn't stick there. So what I'm going to do now is just holding it in place, we're just going to bring just this part of the uh, strips together, not the entire thing. I want it to be quite open. And then I'm just going to use my pair of scissors and I'm going to start trimming them to achieve these little very tiny strips of stamens that we have. So the scissors will only go all the way until where these uh, two pieces of wafer paper meet. So we're not going to go all the way. So this is going to hold all our strips together. So you can play around with skinnier or um, thicker strips of wafer paper. If you feel like you want them to go skinnier, you can always go back to trim them. So we're just going to do this for the entire piece. So while you're working on this step, you want to make sure that your wafer paper hasn't dried out um, yet because we're going to wrap this thing around the little center that we just created. So just ensure that your wafer paper is not all dried out. I'm going to flip it around. So if it's starting to look a little bit too uniform, you can always go back to trim it. We can just trim some away so they are shorter and they are longer pieces. So whatever that's happening here is very normal. <laughs> this is in order for you to achieve different thickness and uh, shapes of the little stamens that we have. Okay, just keep going. Almost there. So I'm just going to probably go back to do some final trimmings. Okay, so this is what you should get. I'm just going to set this aside. And then right now, sorry, just going to trim a little bit more. Okay, and right now we're just going to go ahead and fluff it up. Just like what we did to our uh, store-bought peony centers or rather the store-bought peony stamens. So I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, this center that has been, uh, that we've just done. So you can go ahead and wrap it around the entire thing. So you can see right now we're going um, around the entire thing for more than one round. So it's almost like one and a half. Uh, you can definitely do this or if you just prefer to stop at the one round mark, you can also do that. So since I have the entire thing, I'm just going to go ahead and use the entire thing. And it will allow me to create a fluffier center as compared to those that is just wrapped um, only one round around the th entire thing. So just wait for paper glue going at the bottom part. Here. And then you just want to wrap it. 
If you find that the height is too tall, you can also go ahead and trim it. So this is just to give you some um, options. You can always start taller and you can trim it down later if you do not want it to be this tall. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up. And then at the bottom part, you will notice all these little folds, which are not very nice. Um, but because this is wafer paper, you can go ahead and, and add some glue. And you can actually soften them and allow them to take the shape of the center that you have just created. Okay, so at this point, this is definitely getting too long. I'm just going to do a quick trim to make it slightly shorter. So as you trim your stamens, you can trim them at different heights to create a more interesting look. So this is a little bit too tall, so maybe shorter. Just a little bit more. Okay, great. So I'm pretty happy with, with where it is right now. There's just one last step for me to do. So it looks a little bit plain just having the tip, just, you know, just having like, just wait for paper. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add this little thing on top. And these are actually just gelatin bits that I have actually colored them in a um, yellow tone. So I just added yellow dust to it to create this very beautiful um, golden yellow look. And I'm just going to open it up. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to stick my brush into the wafer paper glue and just gently tap on the, onto the tips of our wafer paper stamen. And then I am going to dip this guy into the pool of gelatin. So I find that this very little, just just a little action really makes the, all the difference to your wafer paper stamen. So you can go ahead and add a little bit more if you like to. Yep. So let's set this aside. So for the very last step of this part, um, is actually the same steps as we did to the store-bought stamens. So we're just going to go ahead and add the air dry clay over here, which I'm not going to show because I've already done it. So it's the exact same step. So just add it on and then you're good to go. Okay, so with that, these are the two methods that we can make our peony centers. These centers can be made in advance and kept for a very long time when they are stored in a cool and dry environment. If you guys need more information on storage or other tips and tricks, do check out the free resources tab on our website.